Hi, my name is uh, Espen Peterson. I'm from the University of Copenhagen, uh, the Department of Computer Science. And I'm here to tell you about the GOES project, about uh, deformable screens that change their shape. So why do we even talk about screens? Well, because today we live in a world of displays. Uh, we have displays in our everyday life, most of the time during the day. And not only just displays, but also flat displays. So most of us sit in front of a thing like this on work or when we study, so a computer, maybe eight hours a day. And then when we ride the train home from work, we immediately find our uh, phone in the pocket to see if something has happened on Facebook. And uh, when we then get home, we sit on our couch and we find the iPad to check if something exciting has happened out in the world. Um, but as you know, the world is not flat. Actually, it's, it's round, it has uh, hills and valleys, and we can grab it with our fingers. And um, compared to that, the way that we interact with uh, touch screens is maybe a bit poor, so we only touch with our fingertips. So the thing that I'm uh, concerned with in my research is how can we make displays for 3D data? Um, and I'm not alone in doing that. I, this is a joint effort in the GOES project, which is an EU uh, project with these four European uh, universities. So when I say 3D data, what do I actually mean? Well, the human brain is in its own sense 3D data. So it's a 3D object with uh, all of these curly parts and, and different um, areas in the brain that, that do different things. Um, and sometimes we can get brain damage or we can get cancer in the brain and then the doctor has to go in and scan the brain in order to find where things are going wrong. <coughs> and how do they do that currently? Well, you guessed it, they sit in front of a flat screen and they look at this flat image and then they try to compare them side by side. But what if the doctor could actually reach into the brain and dig out and explore with his hands the different uh, areas of the brain? And that's exactly what we try to, um, to make possible in the GOES project. So here you see one of our uh, prototypes. Um, and as you can see here, the doctor has, uh, he went up to the screen and put his hand on it. And now he want to explore the brain. And the way he does that on a, on a deformable screen is by actually pushing his hands into the screen. So he can, he can, um, kind of dig into the different areas of the brain and we, uh, we don't have that um, glass surface in front of the data anymore. We can, we can actually reach in and touch the data. So how is that possible? Well, if we look at um, normal touch screens like the one you have in your pocket uh, or a bigger one like this one, they're all made out of glass. So we can't bend them or deform them, or at least if we would, they will probably break. So instead of having glass displays, we use um, deformable material. In this case, it's uh, lycra, which is a uh, similar material as they make swimsuits from. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty stretchy and it's, um, it's deformable. Uh, and the question I'm concerned with in, in my research is, how do we detect deformations like this one? And why is that so hard to do? Well, if we look again to the iPad and, and um, investigate a little bit how the iPad sees us. So when we touch an iPad, we, we have a certain posture and we, um, our hand is positioned in a, in a certain way. But all that the iPad actually see is uh, the tip of our finger touching the glass display. So when an iPad tries to find out where and how we touch it, uh, you can think of the iPad actually as, an, as a a coordinate system. So um, when we reach in and touch the display, um, the iPad starts scanning first in uh, one orientation until it's fi it finds um, the contact point and then it scans in the other direction until it finds the contact point again and then it knows that we touch the screen here. But if we go back again and look at the deformable display, you'll see that this uh, interaction is a bit more complex than just touching with the tip of our fingers. We have depth here and we have two fingers and different deform, uh, deformation gestures. And um, that's what I'm trying to find out. And how do we do that then? Um, so instead of using the 
what we can call the iPad approach or capacitive touch approach, we use uh, depth data captured by one of these uh, 3D cameras. So here you see um, the deformable screen again, but now we're on the other side of the screen and I'm touching with two fingers and pressing into the screen. But if we did th this in the, in the iPad approach and scanned here and here, we would only see two touch points and we would lose all of the rich information about how we actually touch the screen. So with these th 3D cameras, we can uh, look at this as a 3D scene and now it's com it com becomes uh, quickly apparent that we're actually are reaching into the screen and we can see the two fingers as kind of uh, mountains or uh, uh, yeah, in, in this screen. And what I'm trying to do is to develop uh, computer vision algorithms that uh, makes it possible to detect these uh, deformations and uh, represent them in a way so that the computer can understand it and we can use that for, uh, for um, interaction. So that's kind of the technical challenge in my research. Another challenge is that we yet don't know how to interact with these screens. So we actually, we're developing something that we don't know how to interact with yet. So if we again look in our pocket to our phone, we see um, these 2D gestures. And most of you are probably familiar with these. So if you want to zoom into a, a picture, we do this pinch to zoom. And if we want to uh, switch to the next picture, we slide our hands. So, so now we have kind of a common vocabulary for how to interact with these 2D displays. But if we then look at 3D gestures or the deformable gestures, it's less apparent how to use these screens. So that's something we are trying to do on, on uh, uh, simultaneously uh, while we develop the screens is make these studies that, that inform us on how to use these screens. And these kind of studies are called guessability study. And what we do is that we show participants something. So this could be a cube like this one. And then we say to the participant, now you see this cube and now the cube moved back. Could you please show me the gesture that you would find appropriate for doing such an action? Or it could be also more complex stuff like having a, a 3D cube like this one and then deforming it in a way that it, it becomes this. Um, and here you see um, a recording from, from one of the sessions. So here the participant is explaining us how he would take this cube and rotate it around its own axis. So what we, what we are uh, hoping to find out here is whether there's some kind of intuitive vocabulary that we all find intuitive to, to use if we, uh, we want to do stuff with these deformable displays. And we've, we found uh, a lot of different and very interesting gestures uh, that the users suggested to us. So for instance, this one I find particularly interesting. So here we reach behind the display actually. Um, and what we're trying to find out now is how, how should we map these gestures to different actions that we want to do with these um, deformable displays. So that's it for the Ghost Project deformable screens that change their shape. Um, and thank you for listening. <laughs>